Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how to overclock and maximize your Intel CPU's performance using a software called ThrottleStop. Before we begin, please be aware that I am not responsible for any damage that may occur to your PC if you choose to follow the instructions in this video. I strongly recommend creating a backup or restore point for your system before proceeding. If you have a laptop or PC with inadequate cooling, I advise against attempting this, as it could lead to overheating and potentially damage your CPU. The settings I will show you will push your CPU to its maximum performance and disable thermal throttling. This means your CPU will run at 100% and you will need to keep an eye on stability issues and high temperatures after. You can also adjust the settings in the software according to your preferences, whether you want faster CPU speeds or power saving, which will reduce performance. However, our focus today is primarily on achieving maximum performance. Stop is a small application designed to monitor and mitigate CPU throttling, particularly on laptops, can also be used on PC, by allowing users to adjust CPU clock speeds, power limits, voltages and much more, ultimately helping to reduce temperatures or potentially to improve performance. Throttle Stop allows you to overclock and undervolt any Intel CPU. To download Throttle Stop, first search for Throttle Stop by Tech Power Up. Make sure to download it from the official techpowerup.com website and not from any other source or you can just click the link in the description. Once you've downloaded the file, it will be in a zip format. I recommend extracting it and placing the folder in a convenient location on your drive. After extracting, open the folder, right-click on throttlestop.exe and select Create Shortcut to create a shortcut. You can then drag this shortcut to your desktop for easy access to the software whenever you need it. When you first launch ThrottleStop, you will be presented with a window like this. Let's first check the right part of the interface since it will be useful when changing settings later on. On the right you will see your CPU information with its current voltage, clock multiplier, and clock speed. Below it you can see information for each of your cores. FID shows the current clock speed multiplier of each core. C0% represents the percentage of time that a CPU core is in the active C0 state. A value of 100.0 means the core is fully active, while a value of 50.0 indicates that half of the CPU core is active. A lower value shows that the core is spending more time in idle or low power states. ID includes the number identification of each individual core. Degree C shows the current temperature, while Max indicates the highest temperature the CPU core has reached since the software started. Below the table, you will find PKG power, which shows your current CPU wattage consumption alongside your maximum wattage consumption. Now that we understand how to monitor our CPU, let's begin the process of overclocking. At the top of the screen, there are four dots representing four customizable profiles. You can set one profile for performance and another for power saving. However, this video focuses on overclocking, so we will select the performance profile, which is typically the first option. Below the profiles tab is the settings. Click the plus button next to the first option. This will allow you to gather all your power plans, so when you check the first box, you can select which power plan throttle stop will use while running. I recommend using the ultimate performance power plan. If you only have the high performance option, that works too. If you'd like to know how to obtain the ultimate performance power plan, I'll leave a link to my previous video about power plans, along with the necessary commands in its description. You can leave the option unchecked. This means that throttle stop will use whichever power plan you are currently using. On my PC, I have this option unchecked because I frequently change my power plans for testing purposes. This way, Throttle Stop doesn't enforce a specific power plan set within the software. Currently, I use my own custom power plan that I created. The next setting to change is Speed Shift EPP. If your CPU supports this feature and it is not grayed out in the software, enable it and set the value to zero. You can enter values between 0 to 255, where 0 indicates that the CPU will prioritize its maximum frequency or the fastest clock speed, and 255 indicates that the system will prefer operating the CPU at its lowest base clock speed. 
If the speed shift EPP option is grayed out, check the settings for clock mod and set multiplier and set them to their maximum values using the arrow facing to right to increase it. Clock mod or clock modulation was created to address an older throttling technique. Setting it to 100% ensures that the CPU runs at full speed. A lower percentage will result in reduced clock speeds. The set multiplier controls the CPU's clock speed by multiplying the base clock. For example, if you enable set multiplier and enter a value of 33, the CPU will operate at 3300 MHz, or 3.3 GHz, since the multiplier value is multiplied by 100. The maximum multiplier value is determined by your CPU's maximum clock speed. For example, if your CPU has a maximum clock speed of 4.4 GHz, then the maximum multiplier will be 44. If you have speed shift EPP enabled and set to zero, you don't need to enable clock mod and set multiplier. If you have power saver enabled, make sure to uncheck it. Next, uncheck the disable turbo option, as selecting this on will turn off the turbo boost capability of your CPU. Also, be sure to uncheck speed step. This is a power saving feature that adjusts the clock speed based on your CPU's temperature, and it can lead to thermal throttling. BD ProSHA, which stands for Bidirectional Processor Hot, is an emergency throttling feature similar to SpeedStep. It acts as a safety mechanism to prevent the CPU from overheating. After disabling both SpeedStep and BD ProSHA, I highly recommend monitoring your CPU temperatures after applying these adjustments to ensure they do not reach dangerous levels. C1E, or Enhanced C1 State, is an advanced power saving state. Disabling this option should prevent the CPU cores from automatically stopping to boost. In my experience, having this enabled can sometimes introduce some system latency and slow down your clock speeds. Once you have made these changes, don't forget to click Save. In the main interface, click on Options. Look for the option labeled Disable Chipset Throttle. If this option is not grayed out, enable it to prevent the chipset from sending throttling signals to the CPU. Next, change the timer resolution setting to 0.50 and set AC timer res to 0. These adjustments can improve system responsiveness and lessen system latency, as the CPU will need to handle more frequent interrupts. After that exit out of options and go ahead and click on FIVR. On the left side go to turbo ratio limits and max it both. Usually the ratios and turbo are the same as your max clock multiplier and may sometimes be a bit higher. On the right is cache ratio, look for min slash max value and make the left box which is your minimum cache ratio same as your right box or the maximum cache ratio. Under cache ratio is miscellaneous. TVB is a feature that automatically increases clock frequency above single core and multi core based on the headroom and temperature of your CPU but when your CPU hits over the temperature limit it will throttle down. Having this turned off prevents TVB from throttling down your clock speed so uncheck thermal velocity boost. VMAX stress prevents your CPU voltage from getting too high and can cause your CPU to throttle and slow down when having it on so uncheck it. The ring down bin setting, when enabled, reduces the CPU cache speed to 300 MHz less than the core speed. It's best to turn this option off. If the overclock option is available, not grayed out, go ahead and enable it. Additionally, you can adjust the voltage for your CPU's core and cache in the middle section of the interface if you needed to. Once you're done with all your changes, make sure to click Apply, and then OK, to save your settings. Next head to Turbo Power Limits or TPL for short. Go to MSR Power Limit Controls. Check the boxes for both Long Power PL1 and Short Power PL2. If you have Clamp boxes checked, uncheck it as Clamp allows the CPU to run slower than the base frequency when it is power limit throttling. For both the Long Power PL1 and Short Power PL2 settings, I recommend setting a value higher than your CPU's power limit. This adjustment helps prevent the CPU from throttling down and reaching that limit. Currently, I have both values set to 1029 which is equal to 1029 watts, which I believe is the maximum. Since this value is high, the CPU cannot reach the limit, and as a result, there is no throttling occurring. Maximize the slider for Turbo Time Limit and check the box on the right to lock the settings. In Turbo Power Limits check the lock box for MMIO. Then in Global Settings. For Power Limit 4, set both boxes to 0 and check the lock box. If PP0 Turbo Time Limit is turned on, uncheck the box for it. After that hit Apply and OK. Now for the last step, go to C1. Once the C states interface pop up click the two arrows pointing to right next to the red package C states to extend it. 
in the right you will see package c state locked next to request select c1 state c1 state is better because it is near c0 state which is the active state for cpus meaning it can transition fast from c1 to c0 making the cpu more active in contrast higher c states such as c2 to c7 represent deeper idle states if you set your system to c7 it will take longer for the cpu cores to reactivate potentially causing performance delays and increased latency below it is demotion on demotion uncheck boxes that are demotion and check the boxes for undemotion lastly check the box for c states ac then off and hit apply after hitting apply the c states ac box should uncheck by itself and then hit ok save and restart your pc please remember that throttle stop must be running for the overclock settings to take effect if you Encounter any issues, such as freezing, closing and restarting your PC will revert your CPU settings back to their default but your throttle stop settings will save so running the software will reapply the settings. Now that we're finished overclocking the CPU all you need to do now is to check for instability issues and monitor your temps then you're good to go. If you have any questions leave them in the comments. I will try to answer it and if there's any information that is wrong in the video please point them out in the comments so I can fix it. A sub and a like is greatly appreciated as I wanted to grow this channel and share more things related to Windows and other stuff such as optimizations as well. These videos take a long time to create due to the time spent researching and testing these settings. In total, it almost took a month to create this video, research, testing, video planning, and editing were included. With that thanks for watching this video and for your support.